Hi everybody and welcome back to our weekly webinars. We shall kick off because it is now 2 o'clock so I always like to respect everybody's time so try to kick off on time. So over the next hour we're going to be talking about ways to attract, engage and inspire new clients and customers to um, use one of, uh, I'm sure everybody knows, the hottest platforms there is on the internet at the moment and that's obviously Facebook. There's other people coming in there like Instagram, Pinterest and different people that are, are, are increasing their presence but still Facebook is that hottest platform um, out there on the internet and that's why many people uh, come into the webinar today to actually learn a lot more about that and we're going to get into that in, in quite some detail. Now our goal uh, and objective today with this workshop is just to equip you with some of the things that you can do, some of the strategies that will help you use your time efficiently uh, and make sure that you uh, use Facebook effectively. We're not going to dive into all of the super complex stuff, we just want to get people set up and start understanding how they can use that to, to drive their business. So there's many, many tools. Um, that you can use and there's loads of options when it comes to marketing on Facebook and what you can easily do is get completely distracted and go off in loads of different directions so my advice and what I encourage um, you, you to do is to have you know to clear away all your distractions and get ready to take some some good news uh, good news <laughs> good notes because uh, there's lots of stuff that we're going to be going through. Of course, as always, you're going to have um, slide. You're going to have the, the the webinar replay that goes out there, so that that will be available. So you'll be able to do that. But I always suggest that you take good news. So what we want to do is help you learn how to use, you know, what I would describe, to be honest, as the greatest marketing machine um, out there at the moment, and and actually make that work for your business and what's been interesting over the past year certainly Facebook as you know floated a couple of years ago and, and since it floated it's been really targeting uh, businesses and marketeers to help them market their business so a lot of the stuff that they have on there now uh, is really directed at helping people market their business market their products and market their services so we want to ensure that we take uh, full advantage of that. Now I'm not going to go over loads and loads of demonstrations I've done in previous webinars because I've got a lot of information to go through but where I think it's appropriate I'll dip into Facebook just so I can see uh, so, sorry just so you can see what, what I'm talking about. We're going to stick pretty much to the slides during this one but I encourage you uh, as always to ask questions if something strikes you uh, uh, you know just just drop me you know a question in there and if something also strikes you as a great idea make sure you take a note about it and if you don't know how to do it, then, you know, just ask me, as, as I've said, because I'm going to talk a bit about apps, uh, and that's always a, an area where people tend to sort of like say, well, I've no idea what an, an app is. So, um, you know, you, you can always ask, ask us. You can go to Facebook Help, and that's one good thing, again, about Facebook. It's got a help section, and I'll, I'll show you that. So um, anything that you're not clear about, then you'll be able to find it. The other good thing about when looking for stuff on Facebook, there's loads and loads of uh, stuff on YouTube. So if there's anything that I talk about today and you haven't got time or you don't want to ring me because you don't want to get into emails, etc., or you don't want to ring me, then it's really easy uh, if you just go on to YouTube and type in whatever the uh, issue you're looking at, Facebook apps or whatever, there'll be a video on there, no doubt, which will talk about Facebook. So, um, you know, you'll have no issues with finding out information on that. So don't be discouraged uh, to, to, you know, to those who are a bit nervous about using Facebook and social media. There's loads and loads of help uh, online and obviously I'm here to help as well, so no problem. So what I want you to walk away from uh, or take away from this today is knowing that Facebook is a, a great place for you regardless of what type of business you're in and that's really really important because there's lots of businesses who say oh Facebook for kids, Facebook isn't for my sort of business, oh yeah if you've got a product and you just want to sell it then maybe it's fine but no what I'm saying is and I'll show you as we go through that whatever the type of business you have Facebook is um, going to be really useful for you if you know what you're doing to market your business and get significant revenues from it. So 
you know the key thing is if, if you can just take one idea and implement that and then next week there's maybe another idea that you can implement uh, to that one uh, but don't walk away overwhelmed is, is basically what I'm trying to say you know take one idea and move forward with it and try and work with it okay so in terms of what we're going to do today in the main objective which I've, I've spoken a bit about already then you know we're going to um, look and get started so the first objective that we're going to focus on is looking at strategies for managing your time Facebook can take a lot of time and I think you know that already so you want to make sure that you manage your time effectively we're also going to learn how to use it more effectively and most importantly how to uh, prevent yourself from being distracted uh, from Facebook you know I'm sure there's many people online who can uh, who can relate to this uh, you get onto Facebook uh, and you say I want to spend five minutes on here interacting and the next thing you know an hour's gone by and you didn't get the get what you wanted to do done because you were firing over here you're looking on there there's an advert in the side there's someone commenting on there so you start getting involved in that there's a nice picture that you've looked at and you started looking up there so we want to talk about some ways to avoid uh, getting that distraction and then how do you can actually build your business using Facebook and that's the critical thing I'm sure that's the only reason why people on here we all know uh, how to mess about online with our friends and, and, and share stuff and if we don't you might not it might be because you don't want to and if you're on this call it's because you want to understand how do you build your business using Facebook so that's what we want to focus on so uh, we want to increase the number of customers basically we want to increase the number of sales so the question is how do we interact with our clients and how do we interact with our customers um, and we're going to take a look at new ways obviously to promote the business so yeah we're going to hopefully go for all those so hopefully that's what you've come on the call for as well so let's just have a look a bit of Facebook stats to understand why Facebook is as I said the, the, probably the biggest marketing machine in the world and why you really need to be focusing on and ensuring that you, you do have a presence on Facebook so <clears throat> excuse me as you can see you know what is Facebook I think most of you know what it is uh, but you know some of our clients um, you know have said to us before we started working them oh I thought Facebook was a place for someone who has too much time on their hands um, and they never really thought it was for, for business uh, for, a, for a couple of different reasons uh, a lot of it is because of the misconceptions but Facebook is a social network where people meet to discuss their mutual interests that's effectively what it is uh, and I think that's really important because in the real world we have obviously things such as you know gatherings of you know alumni from school or universities you have family reunions you have trade shows you have business businesses after hours and business after hour sessions you have the chamber of commerce of course um, and all the and all their networking meetings that they have but instead of reaching a few dozen people in some of these events or maybe even a hundred or two hundred then what Facebook allows you to do is it gives you the ability to reach thousands of people who have mutual interest or in your target market and of course of us all, all you know we know that if you're gonna do or you're gonna use Facebook and if you don't know I'm gonna I'm gonna go through it and I'm gonna show you as we move through but if you're gonna use Facebook it is gonna cost you a traditional sort of a fraction of marketing in the traditional methodology so you know because if you're gonna have a trade show or you're gonna have a you're gonna put an event on that's gonna cost you a significant amount of cash in terms of invites venue etc if you're gonna do an alumni meeting or you're gonna you know you can do any sort of presentation you're gonna have to pay for venues and all that sort of stuff whereas with Facebook you've got the platform you can have those events within Facebook you can do everything you need to do in Facebook and it's gonna cost you a fraction and I'll talk to you about how it's probably going to actually increase your interaction as well so you know that's the key thing about Facebook you know it's going to enable you to get to thousands of people at a low a much lower cost than you would be able to do it in any other medium so you know as I said it's the world's most powerful social network so let's just have a look at a few more things um, you know I say it's the world's most powerful network experts say it's the world's most powerful network and you know it's all backed up by statistics which are obviously on the slide here you know there's more than a billion active users on Facebook which is is quite significant 
and more more importantly than the amount of uh, active users there are, they spend more than 700 billion minutes a month on Facebook. You know, and there are 500 people, uh, 500 million uh, users accessing Facebook via their mobile phone. Sorry, uh, and you know, it, mobile users are more active on Facebook than non-mobile users. And there's loads of other stats, and I've given those in previous webinars where by you know some of the the first thing that a lot of i think it's 90 percent of facebook users do when they wake up is reach for the mobile phone check the status updates etc so if you when you're looking at these stats you can start to get a view that actually if you're on facebook um and you've got all these people obviously not all these people are going to be viewing your particular profile but if you're getting a slice of that of the people who are actually interested in your product your service or your area of business then all of a sudden you can see how this can really really start to generate large amounts of income for your business so and a good example ago a good example is is not too long ago i had a friend of mine uh, who had just had her carpets cleaned and she went and posted about that specific company because she had a good experience with with, with the carpet cleaner and they you know posted about how wonderful they were and how you know she had uh, she can't believe that the carpets had come back to their original color uh, and the carpet cleaner you know picked up free sales in one day just from her posting because people were seeing that and and that's the kind of viral activity that you want to see and you want to encourage your customers to do so uh, yeah i'm sure everybody understands that but i've got loads of examples of of where people have posted it or people have got a review on a facebook site and then all of a sudden they start getting lots of lots of footfall through the door so it's um important for us to understand that so you know do facebook make use make purchases then obviously i've just demonstrated to you that that, that they will and that they do and um, statistics have shown that over time that the money you spend on facebook and this is really important you know statistics have shown that over time that the money you spend on facebook returns five times the amount of other traditional advertising like direct mail and, and so forth so that's a really important point just to, to just to hold in your mind even if you thought well i'm not really sure about facebook that one point alone should be enough to say i, I need to start getting involved in facebook because i'm almost positive that everyone on the line does some sort of what we describe as traditional marketing whether that's print or you know, print advertising direct mail you know advertising in yellow pages etc so you know one of the things that i found interesting when i was going through and doing a bit some uh, some more research and as i've been working with clients um is that i know that some of the people that are on the web webinar and, and this will be uh, helpful to them and the large the, the largest growing demographic user group on facebook is 50 plus uh, and a lot of people always seem to think that Facebook's for kids. I see it everywhere. You know, when I speak to people about Facebook, when I speak to clients about Facebook, they're always sort of like saying, oh, yeah, it's for kids. Yeah, my daughter plays on it. You know, it's not really for business. Uh, and, and I think that as these demographics start to change, then, uh, or should I say, as people are more aware that these demographics start to change, people will start becoming to, to realize that actually Facebook is a, is a real important medium for people to utilize. Because obviously, there is a lot of people, um, you know, in terms of 18 to 34, and, you know, you've got a large um, active user demographic there, but the largest growing user demographic is 50 plus. So, you know, and that that's where the money, you know, if you say 34 to 50 plus is where the money is. So, you know, that's a really important uh, demographic. So if you thought, you know, because your demographic was a bit older, that, you know, Facebook was of no use to you, then you might want to have a little rethink about that. So um, we're going to, excuse me we're gonna move on to some of the pros and the cons of facebook uh firstly the pros you know first of all i want to stress that this is an option you know facebook is an option it's, it's an option that i use very heavily in my business and i have I, I focus a lot on it with with clients because i get a very good return on investment for the clients with it but also want to stress here you know when you're looking at online marketing and when you're looking at marketing it's part of the marketing mix it is an option for marketing it's not your only option uh, it's not where you necessarily want to do all of your business depending on, i mean you can do there's some businesses that just solely promote on facebook and they do very very well but you know you don't have to and you don't you don't necessarily want to so we're going to take a look at the pros and the cons but you need to expand 
be on Facebook as well because what we've been talking about on all these webinars as we've been going through is that holistic approach and making sure that you're found across the whole uh, of the internet and not just in in you know one specific area so you've got your website you've got your Facebook we've talked about Google your listings etc your citations so always remember that you know uh, but you do want to make sure that you have a basic presence on Facebook whatever the, whatever your business whatever you want to do you want to make sure that you do have some presence on Facebook and you don't this is the great thing it's affordable you don't need to spend a lot of money to do that actually you could argue you don't need to spend any money if you know where to get pictures from etc uh, but if you do want your image to be really professional and you want to make sure that you have a, a logo uh, and a brand which is consistent across the internet so you've got a website for example uh, with a particular header image and we've talked about that in previous webinars you might want to use that same header image in your Facebook so that there's a consistency of your brand across and therefore you may want to pay for you know your images there but that's about the only thing that you're going to pay for in terms of setting up your presence so it's it's, it's, it's very affordable as you said there it's really easy uh, to learn uh, how to use it your target market is is there it's it's just very nice uh, uh, and and simple to actually get get an access to that target market so the last couple of weeks we talked about blogging uh, and about websites um so as i said you want to make sure you carry that across so as as other you know it says they're the leading uh, social platform and you know as i said at the outset facebook's the most popular social network at the moment now Google Plus and there are some others is doing a run on Facebook and it's coming you know and it's really investing a lot uh, into its social network and as I've said before it makes sense because Google owns it that you want to get on the Google Plus network as well because obviously you know Google uh, utilizes all of their all social networks in terms of ranking um, on you know in terms of SEO but obviously it does give a, a slightly bigger credence to Google Plus because Google is its own network and obviously YouTube is also owned by Google so those are aspects that, that we're you know certainly YouTube we're going to be talking about in future webinars but in terms of the, the, the visibility of any other network Facebook has the biggest visibility has the biggest active user group it's growing uh, it's not growing as rapidly as it used to but it's still growing at a good rate so it's really really important you need to be on there now unlike Twitter which we're going to talk uh, we're going to talk about um, Twitter limits you to 140 characters and I have this conversation because the, the, I've got a, a chap in my business who focuses on Twitter and I'm really the guy who focuses on Facebook in, in, in my business uh, on what I've uh, we have a running battle about which is better Facebook or Twitter of course I'm always winning because the clients we have get more business than than the ones that that we utilize on Twitter um, and that's quite simply because Twitter limits you to 140 characters and, and with Facebook you have plenty of plenty of space to engage your audience and that's what it's really about isn't it this, this is a social network so if you want to be social and you want to engage people and you want to get a conversation going it's a lot easier to do it in my opinion and from my evidence uh, on Facebook rather than doing it on Twitter and the key thing is that it's a you know as it says there it's a flexible format and it supports customer engagement it's a two-way street and that's what we need to uh, ensure now anyone who's been through and, and been on on, on these calls and, and going through my webinars then you know that I always talk about that no like and trust factor Facebook gives you the format to engage the customers and help build that no like and trust factor uh, so those are pretty much the, pro the pros so what about the cons well the biggest one and I've mentioned this already is the distractions you know some of the distractions sometimes when you you can just feel completely overwhelmed with the entire process because you get on there and there's just so many things uh, to, 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 to be doing so you know you've got distractions there's lots of things on there you know when we go onto a Facebook page there's so many different buttons that actually very very easy to navigate through but if you're new to it when you get on there then actually it can be overwhelming uh, and because you know it can be overwhelming and because there's so many other distractions you can always you know get so engrossed in it that you start forgetting other marketing tactics and that's not good as I've said you know unless you've made a conscious decision that you're going to focus on Facebook which I don't suggest you do um, then actually you want to make sure that you've got a balance in there and that you're not just doing 
everything on Facebook every single day. So, you know, again, one of the ways to, to overcome that is to, to pick one thing, have a plan, uh, and hopefully after today's webinar, you'll be, you'll be taking notes and you'll have a plan and say, all right, that was good, that was good. I'm, at least the one thing I'm going to do, if I haven't got a Facebook page, I'm going to set up a profile and I'm going to invite some people to, to like the page. So, you know, it's really about, you know, I could do these five things. Which one's the most important? Let me take one thing out of that. Which is going to give me the most bang for my book initially? Because again, always remember that the only reason you're on Facebook in this arena is because you're trying to drive business so always be thinking about that return on investment and in, in, in terms of what we're talking about here is your return on your time invested uh, we're going to talk about return on cash invested uh, short and uh, as we move through so that's the first thing we need to know because you know successful people they always have a variety of ways to reach their target market and that's what we're talking about here uh, you know facebook should this be one of them so don't get overwhelmed don't get distracted don't get focused on i'm just going to do facebook over and over again so you know if you're the person that's easily sucked into facebook and all the things that are going on then you want to be aware of that and set yourself a limit you know you know uh, put a time on it you know it if you really just can't control yourself, even get you know your alarm clock or you know at one of those stopwatches with a timer on it, put it on for 15 minutes. You know, right? Every day I go in for 15 minutes to 15 minutes to get some interaction on my Facebook page. Put that timer on. When the 15 minutes is up, you know, then you just say, right, I'm moving on to something else because you've got lots to do. I'm sure. So make sure that there's a structure. We're going to talk about that today, so about some of the things that you can put on onto the plan uh, that you can then do that more efficiently. But, you know, Facebook, the one, one of the great things about it is it does facilitate engagement and you want to make sure that you have that communication. So I'm not saying don't do it. You need to communicate. You know, you have to be open to people. You you want to be open to asking questions and answering those questions because you want people to be asking you questions. Uh, but again, you don't want it to take all your time and then obviously as it says there one of the negatives is it's an ability for audiences to see negative com com comments or reviews but I always say that, that you can always turn that to a positive because the way in which you respond to that if you t you can actually turn around or at least minimize that negative comment because there's lots of other people seeing it again is that social interaction people see that actually you're human people see that you've responded and people can see actually that you're a genuine person and actually if it's a if it's a, a genuine negative review you can actually then take that on board and, and actually improve your business on the basis of that and actually thank the person for putting it up there and you know and, and there's loads of ways that you can turn that around i'm sure that you all know the best way to do those so in terms of planning and having your facebook strategy when you have a plan you know think about what it is that you're actually trying to do is your goal you know on facebook to increase sales is it to promote a particular event or product or service you know are you just trying to build more brand awareness um and we're going to talk about that throughout the webinar the real key thing and, and this is the same in any business for anything whether you're doing you know online or whether it's offline whenever you're doing any sort of marketing activity you should be looking at what is your objective because if you if you, if you don't know what your objective is how do you then measure whether that has been successful you know that's that's really key um, and the same thing with your target audience, you know, you want to be looking at, you know, where is it that you want to be? And we talked a bit about this uh, in the past couple of, of webinars. You know, what is the age group that you're going after? Are you going after females? Are you going after males? You, you need to know who your target or audience is because when you are on Facebook and you're posting, what you're trying to do is you're trying to direct your message to those people. And, and a, a very uh, good marketer and one of my coaches used to say to me that actually when you're giving out communications you want to be writing communications you want to be um, delivering communication as if you're talking to that individual person who personifies your target customer so that once your target customer is reading it they feel like you're actually communicating directly to them so uh, you know that this then helps also in terms of crafting your Facebook ad campaigns which we're going to talk about okay so some of the things uh, to think about along these lines is how you're going to reach that target audience an example would be let's say you uh, created you know you create a, a monthly uh, editorial calendar that's it's, it's what you're going to post uh, and you have a daily post around a particular topic now that topic may be around a product or a service that you have to offer uh, and you you want to generate comments and you're, and you're generating comments and discussions based around that so you're setting up a calendar uh, 
and I'm, I'm talking about not necessarily on the page, I'm talking about you're setting up a calendar for you and, into, you know, as in to manage your time. So you're setting up a calendar uh, and you're saying that basically on this day you're going to post uh, about, you know, this particular thing, on that day you're going to post about that particular thing. And I always say uh, to people that you theme your days. Now, the benefit of theme your days is many fold. It's number one, it means that you can chunk up activities so that actually you can go and get your pictures, you can go and get your information and say, right, on Mondays, I know I post all this so you can prepare all, all your information for Mondays. You then got your information prepared for Tuesdays. On Tuesdays, I talk about this feature or benefit. On Wednesdays, I give a tip out and I put this out and I put some specials out depending on your business. So you then start to have a plan which makes it much more manageable because you know you know that each day you've got a specific activity for that page you want to do. And the beauty of that as well um, is that uh, your customers or your clients also get an idea of what's coming on which particular day. So that's really, really useful uh, to understand and to know as well. So there's lots of different things that you can do to, to actually engage the audience and, and then you can, you know, you're asking for your your fans audi and your audience's engagement around those particular things. I mean, the one that I see very regularly is Throwback Thursdays, and they just do something that's like retro on a Thursday because people love retro stuff. Uh, and then, you know, thank God it's Friday. There's loads of different ways you can theme it depending on what your business is. Uh, and you can launch, a, a you know, a Facebook advertising campaign. And, uh, <clears throat> and we're going to have to uh, a follow-up video uh, potentially on advertising because that's a really big area that obviously will cost you cost you money but you then have to look at you know how you build uh, and track and measure those sort of things but you can you can do advertising um you know you can have a youtube video contest on your page you can promote prizes and we'll talk about more about that in a minute um and you can you know run contests etc and of course in those sort of things it's, it's, you, you, you've probably all seen it you can offer an incentive of some kind for liking your page a free gift that you have if you're a restaurant you know a free appetizer free drinks whatever whatever it may be to get people in uh, not only to to get them into your your um to your shop to your restaurant but also to like the page because obviously if they like the page other people see that their friends etc see that they've liked the page but the key thing is as i said you know at the outset you know you need to know your objective because you want to make sure that you can determine how you're going to measure the success of each strategy so don't do five things at one time that's what i'm saying you know if you do everything at one time you're going to get overwhelmed you're going to struggle to actually start measuring it if you do one thing you know you then measure that success and we're going to talk about that uh, later on uh, about stats and how you can follow up those stats uh, and then you measure that success Obviously, if it works, you rinse and repeat, you'll do it again. If it doesn't work, you go back and tweak it and, and, and do something uh, different. And then, you know, if it's working and then that's working, you, you almost got that on autopilot, then you can then look at something else and then add that in and go through the same process again. Try it. It works. You've measured the success. You know that it's got a good return on investment. Do it again and then move on to something else. So that's what we that's what we suggest, and this is what we do in our in our business, and it and it works very very well. So moving on to customer engagement because that's what you're obviously trying to do when you're on Facebook. It's a social network. You want to get people involved. You want to get people engaged because that's how you build, grow, uh, and grow Facebook pages. That's how you build that know, trust, and like factor, and that's how you get more business. From your Facebook page, so as we said, you know the internet is to, is interactive. You want to open the door to real customer engagement. You don't just want to be posting things out there like your current sales and your latest posts on your blog. You know you want to try and get interaction with customers. And I, I, again, this is another point to emphasise. So you know if you're going to write anything down, write this down. The the the, the Facebook sites and the businesses that do very badly on Facebook. And these are lots of clients whereby they'll say, oh, it doesn't work. is because they go on there and all they do is bombard you with their sales. So every single post is a special. Um, every single post is something about their product. They don't do any sort of social engagement at all. And people are not going to come to your page just for you to sell to them. Because actually, people don't come onto Facebook uh, just to be sold to. Fe people come onto Facebook to share information. People come to, onto Facebook to share interests. People come onto Facebook for jokes, uh, you know, discussions, etc. They don't come onto Facebook just to, just to hear you tell you tell 
everybody how good your product is every single post so you know there's an art to it and you have to think about that and, and think about what it is that you're going to put there because it's quite simple isn't it you know would you be more inclined to buy a product based on you know um the fact that someone's recommended it to you or or the fact that you know you've gone onto page and someone's bombarding you with information you know um you would you be more likely um, inclined to buy a product based on a print advertising you know highlighting the benefits that you might have wanted them from an item because that's and the reason i'm saying that because that's effectively what you're doing when you're just bombarding them with stuff on your page about your products it's, it, it might as well be a print ad it might as well be a flyer that's gone out so are you more likely to sign up or buy whatever that service or product is if you're just bombarded with that information or if you're going on there and it's an actual conversation on Facebook and it has the representative of the company on there and there's a pro and there's a dialogue between you know going back and forth about a particular product or a particular service between you know a representative i.e. me or uh, you know and several different customers or just customers posting things on there or there's some stuff on there which actually isn't directly related to the business but is very viral and people then come to the page uh, and actually start looking at the page and think oh this is really interesting you know uh, so there's lots of different things you can do but you have to make sure that you're actually interacting and it's not just about me telling you this is my service this is my product you know um, come and like me to get this service and product it's it's you know unfortunately traditional advertising um, is losing its power and if there's anyone on this call from the yellow pages or local newspaper or any print advertising you know I know it's discouraging to hear that but I'm pretty positive that you also and already know that. So it's, I'm, I don't think it's something that is, uh, I'm telling you that, that's completely new. You know, people want to have responses from, from people. You know, people are getting online to find that information. You know, people want to speak to people, whether that's, you know, on the telephone, which obviously is more and more, less and less it, it's on the telephone because it's so easy to do everything on the internet and you get that same immediacy of response. People want to interact. So, you know, that's really import important. A um, bit more on that, you know, things like product research, you can do that on your page, you know, if there's something, you know, you've got new products out and you just say, you know, I want feedback on this, or you not even that, you know, sometimes and some of the things that I've done which are even, even better than actually the product research at, at the back end, but before you've launched a product, you can pre-launch on Facebook. So you've basically got a new product coming out, or you've got a new special coming out, or you've got a new meal coming out, or you've got a new chef coming, whatever. Um, yeah, the chef's probably a bad example because you probably wouldn't put on there and say what do you think of him or you might do if you knew that that chef is great so you're basically putting products up there and saying look thinking of, of producing this product because we've had some great feedback on on our other products is this something that you w would find useful you know you know, t t uh, you know put you put yes in the comments box or whatever so you start getting immediate feedback and you have, obviously you can also do that on products that you've already got out there but the one that i found works really well is when you're launching products and you're actually putting it on your page because people love to give their opinions and 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 hope and think um that they're actually affecting what you're doing and actually if you're a re reactive business it shouldn't be that, that they just think that they're going to affect your your what you're doing but they should actually affect it you should take on board their their feedback because that's some real quality feedback and actually it will enhance your sales and enhances your page because people see that what they've said on the page that they actually had an effect on what you've done with that product and that again enhances that like that know and that trust factor so you know telling stories is, is always great um you know providing updates is, is always good in terms of getting engagement you know if something's changed if you've added a new product if you've got a new member of staff whatever that is like that you've had a new service keeping them informed basically of what's going on and more important than that encouraging conversation i'm going to talk a bit about that you know putting calls to action asking questions asking people to click like asking people to share you know encouraging you know action you know don't just put a whole raft of information on there always be asking something and trying to get an elicit a response and, you know and, and bring awareness and interest to your page uh, and, and the best way to do that is is you know with dialogue and, and asking questions as i've said so you know we've mentioned this a bit posting and having a having a, a schedule i mean i'll put it down as an edit editorial calendar probably a better description would be a schedule you know if you get a schedule it's much much easier you know um you can tie things in 
uh, to what's going on in, on the news. So you have your theme days, and then you on some of those days, if one if one of those days is around, you know, um, say you're a restaurant and it's about rest, big big things that happen in, in in the restaurant industry, then you might you know have that and and try and tie that into the daily news because that's always good because people are always more interested if something's interesting in the news then the chances are that you'll have a, an opportunity to make you know get a lot of interaction on your page about it so you know if it's, it's going to catch on quickly especially if it's directly related to your or indirectly related to your your product uh, and if you can tie that into an event that's happening that'd be really good you know something like that so you know if you're a sports manufacturer or you're uh you know a manufacturer of clothes or whatever and there's obviously the Euro kit, European Cup for those people who are on the line who are interested in football uh, is starting I think in the next week or so then you know you might put that on or you're about to you know do the, the big live game on the weekend and you're going to be showing it in your, your bar or restaurant that's probably something that you want to put on there so it's just getting people engaged by asking questions um, you know and, and, and let me just give a, a more specific example let's say for example you're at a party store and you provide party decorations and that that, that sort of thing uh, you might well start a conversation for example on the best games for a five-year-old and people are then gonna throw in you know you know this this is what we do this is you know a game that we've got and you'll get loads of response about it because it's something simple it's something that all people can get involved in party games and they're going to talk about it. and you're gonna get loads of back and forth participating in the conversation and then you know so if you think about it, that's not a promotional post you're not promoting your business you're just saying what are the five best party games you can think of for example um and then as that conversation starts going on you can then throw in there oh yeah by the way our store uh, has this particular thing that we can provide for your party kind of bringing that back to exactly what it is that you do so that's that's just a a, a nice way uh, of you know posting so people don't think that you're selling to them all the time you're engaging conversation but you're making sure that you don't lose sight and this is important that you don't lose sight of what you're on there for you are there to sell your products but you need to do it in a way whereby it's engaging and you're actually talking about other things that people are going to be interested in so you know get involved and 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 and, and really try and um you know engage in conversation so let's start talking about how you set up profiles um you know really really simple all you need to do is is uh, you know go onto facebook and the first thing is you need to have your personal profile first uh, before you can have a business page so what you want to do is create a business page but you have to make sure that you're on facebook and you've got a personal page first and then you can then create a business page so this is where you know the, the 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 personal page is where the people find out all about you as a person it's where you'll invite your friends to uh, and you want to make sure you've got that first now this is imperative because i know that people try sometimes to scam the system because i knew somebody once who who decided not to set up a, a business page and what they actually did was they had a personal profile and it actually got shut down because of this they had a personal profile down profile sorry uh, and that was their and they basically set the personal profile up so the first name was the first name of their business and the second name was the second the last name of their business and they were using that personal profile to promote their business facebook doesn't like that um so they actually got uh, that facebook page or which was their personal pr page shut down and they had i think they had a, a couple of thousand people uh, on it a couple of thousand friends on it so it's it's not difficult to do but you want to make sure that you um <laughs> you do set up a business uh, you, you know a business page if you want to promote your business don't start promoting it overtly through your personal page and then in that profile i'm going to touch on this in a minute you can put things about your business in there but don't be just posting loads and loads of stuff about your business all the time set up a business page um and and, and try and keep it you know your personal page for your personal and your business for your business of course you might mention that this is the business you work at and this is what you do on your personal page because that's part of you and part of what you do but don't start as i said posting loads and loads of promotional stuff on there because facebook will probably have a have a little look at that and they don't like it so um yeah so so you you want to set that up and always try and make sure that you set it up on your personal page because I know also you've got I've, I've had some people who've said to me oh well I haven't got time to I'm not really interested in Facebook I want to just get my, I'll get one of my employees to set up his personal uh, page and then stick um, their business page on it 
and then or should I say stick my business page on it problem with that is if they decide if, if they decide or you decide that that employee is to leave then that business page goes with their personal profile there is ways to retrieve it but if that if that um, particular employee is a disgruntled employee then he might not give you back that business page and then you'll have lost that business page on all the fans on it so you want to make sure that you, any page which is pertinent to your business is on your personal uh, on your personal page and you can obviously set up that employee as a administrator but you want to make sure that that is yours so in terms of the must-haves that you want to make sure that, that, that are on your personal page there's an about us selection on your personal page and you can provide a short description about you what's important to you you can do that again on your business page as well remember what you're building it for it's about the no like and trust factor people want to know that you're a real human being and you know if you don't mind letting your friend know about your business you can put your business website on there and some links to maybe your blog page uh, if you want to you know I mean I don't actually uh, but you can do the advantage is there that you, you know you have your friends who are then in a position to recommend you or your products or service if they want to do it through there but what I tend to do is just I invite my friends to my business page to be honest um, so that that to me that is a, is a it's, there's more of a delineation there uh, so I, I prefer that so you should always have a profile picture don't just let it be a little grey nondescript picture which some people do in there because you, again you want people to trust you don't want you want them to know it's you make sure it's a clear headshot that builds credibility and trust and depending on what interest uh, industry you're in um, you know, let's let's say for example you're in the healthcare industry it, it, you know and, or you're doing something about vitamins it'd be great to have a picture with you and your wife and your two healthy kids if you're not healthy and obviously you're in the healthcare industry then maybe you don't want to have a picture and you want to find a, a different picture there but yeah you want to do something that's that's you know relevant and actually is, is attractive and engaging but don't make it overtly sexy you know you want people something that's attractive but not that that's completely you know a bit off the wall if you if you get my drift um and then obviously you've got the cover photo and this should reflect uh, your interest you know your family your photo so you can change that out as often as you like and you know we always say change it change your profile picture especially on your business page if you can um you know on a regular basis it, it, it creates engagement um and you know so if you're a football fan you can stick something like you know a, you know your football team or your favorite player or an fa cup if you've just won the fa cup uh whatever it may be so a few more things privacy you can control who sees your posts uh, we're not going to get into that because there's but there's tons of uh, privacy controls you can set up and then you can start interacting with people the best people to in, get initially to like your business page are the people who are already your friends on facebook so start sending invitations to friends and family um and we'll i'll, I'll show you that in a bit and once you've created your personal profile uh, then you have the basis on which to build your Facebook page for your business uh, and as I said the business profile always comes after the personal profile now a couple of things about your business page uh, the way you create a business page if you haven't done this already I'll just show you so let me just go into here dum, dum, dum. so if you I'm in Facebook here and my two lovely kids uh, so you go into Facebook here if you go on to here so this is my personal profile if you go down to here which is like I don't know what I think it's called a little gear then you drop down and you'll see here create a page that's it you create a page and then you just fill in all the all the information so it's pretty much as simple as that uh, there is another way to do it which if you I don't really see the necessity but if you go onto someone else's page um, say for example you're just on the coca-cola page or whatever in the top right hand box there's a big blue button that says create pages but I think that you know it's just a lot easier to go into your own page you're on your personal profile you, you click on that little gear and stick you drop down and then you put in uh, you know you create the page and then you're away that's as easy it is um, and, and with most things on Facebook it's pretty clear what you need to do and it's all in little drop down boxes so it's very very nice and, and simple to do so um, you do that go in there create a page uh, and you know once you've done that you, the page is sorted and then as I, as I showed you there let me just go back in actually just so you can see these are the pages that I manage so what will happen is that once you create a page that page will then drop into here 
And as you can see, just, just as a matter of reference, all of these are the interactions that I've got on each of these pages. So some of those are likes, some of those are comments, some of those are messages that I've got. So that's why I'm saying it's a social media, and that's why I'm saying you can't get overwhelmed because we, I mean, I've got people obviously who help me do this and work for me and, and do this, but they go in and you then need to manage those pages. You can't just leave it because you will get, once you know what you're doing and you're creating interaction, you'll start getting lots of interaction on all of your pages and you need to make sure that you've, you've set up a plan so that you can manage those effectively. So it's really important um, because otherwise you will get swamped. So that's an important thing to just mention there. So once you've done that, uh, you're going to want to assign a name and the name that you assign will normally be your business name and you can get what is called a vanity URL and you just go in there and you just change I mean in the in the uh, edit page details uh, or update info you'll just go in there and then you'll let me just show you where the where a lot of these things are so if you're going in here you have to go to your page then so if you go to this page and my Facebook for whatever reason always uh, seems to take a long time to load I have no idea what it is so if I go into here you go into edit page and then you just go into update page info or edit settings um, and actually I think you go into edit settings and then you go into yeah, it's the same thing you go into page info and then you'd go in here and then you'd enter, enter your Facebook web address and then you'd be able to then change that web address from there okay I'm just go back to my personal profile and then we will go back to the slides. So yeah, so you can go in there and then you can change the vanity URL because if you don't change it, um, then all that happens, I mean, not, it's not, not bad, it'll be, it, it'll, the, the URL you'll get standard will be facebook.com uh, and then a, a whole raft of numbers at the end of it. And you just want to make it slicker so when you put it on your business card, when you're putting it, uh, you know, when uh, people are searching for it, it's just nice and easy to find. So we, we talked about that in SEO, SEO when we're talking about domain names. So a similar type of thing. So you want to do that. I think you have to have a certain amount of, I don't know if you do anymore, but you used to have to have a certain amount of likes before you could do it. You might. I actually think now you can just do it uh, immediately. Um, and, and I suggest that you do do that. So I would suggest again that you, you, you make sure it's the name of your business. Um, so if it, if you're uh, an estate agent, obviously put the name of your business in there. But sometimes what, I, what I've done and what I find very useful is actually not to make it generic, but to make it uh, less specific to your business. So that if you actually decide to change the name of your business or you decide that actually you're gonna move into a slightly different area and you wanna highlight that, that you're not caught out because you've got a very specific name. So one of the things that I've done, and like if, uh, if you're an estate agent, for example, um, you may well put, you know, uh, home buying magazine or something of that nature, because that's, that's actually specific enough to capture all the people you need. Uh, it's a memorable name, but also it means that if you then move into slightly different things um, or you change your business name, then it's not it doesn't actually affect you in the slightest. So as I said, you go in there you, and you can edit that. So um, yeah, and that's pretty much that. And then obviously you've got your fans, people who visit your page, you know, you, you want to encourage them to click the like button uh, and there's lots of different ways that we can do that. So moving on, the cover page is the large image. Um, and um, I'll show you an example of that in just a minute but it's the large image that's placed at the top of your business page the dimensions are listed there I think that's pretty much still the same uh, but when you when you try and post in uh, Facebook always tells you anyway and it'll tell you what what, what the what the size is uh, keep in mind that it's public so you want to make sure that you're uh, projecting an image that you're happy uh, to project and that the business is about and this can change um, so you can change that and, and actually what I do depending on the type of business it is and the type of interaction it is I often run competitions on my pages um, for you know cover photo of the week so people uh, as I said depending on the business so if I if I, when I'm running uh, for merchandise organizations for example you get loads of people who are posting pictures of them in a specific type of merchandise especially if it's a sports team merchandise like that one I just showed you on the 49ers then you know people will always then post pictures of themselves in specific gear and you can run competitions and things to just say right well you know post your pictures here and then we'll get um you know we're going to put the, the the best fans picture 
uh, as our cover photo for this week and people love that you get loads of engagement you get loads of pictures sent to you um, and you get loads of people wanting to to get involved so um, that I think is is important so um, you know make sure you know what what it is that you're trying to uh, project these are some uh, examples of business covers so as you can see this doberman looking through the window here is um the cover photograph and this is the the um the profile picture that we were talking about and this is a picture for uh, uh, this sorry this is a a page for an organization that sells actually doberman um merchandise so hats caps so it's a clothing st store and that's why i said that you don't always have to have the name of the store uh, and if and I'm, I haven't got time today, but if you went through to the page, you'd see that the page isn't all about my memorabilia. Uh, memorabilia isn't all about the, the the products and the merchandise. We 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 make sure that we sell those, and we sell very well, and, and they've obviously increased their business quite significantly through the Facebook page. But a lot of the posts are about information, articles, pictures from fans, and then we also make sure that we post. Um, pictures, uh, sorry, we, uh, of the uh, products that they're selling and, and links to those products, and that does very, very well. Then the one below is, is another client site, and this is a real, real revolutionary app actually. So if you are watching this, go to you know that 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 website, IamLost.co.uk, uh, and and actually go and like them on Facebook if you can. Because this is a company that we just started working with recently to help them launch a re revolutionary app. So I'm not going to go into it, but it's basically an app that helps you find lost things. So you know, if you if you lose your, your kids' clothes, um, how you know, it, it, it's just a, a great app. I'm not going to go into it. It's a great app. So yeah, go there and, and, and go and have a have a look at that. Um, so yeah, the profile picture, um, you know, is that big picture here on this case. So this is obviously something that they that, that they've put together, um, and obviously they're promoting different things so that when people come to the page, you can see it immediately, um, and you know go, you, they can go there and they know what it is. So they they're automatically trying to get engagement uh, from the profile picture. So that's the profile picture. And there's some information. You know, the profile picture needs to be at least 200 by 200. Clear headshot if it's if you're doing it for if it's for purely a business, but a clear shot uh, uh, as you saw on those two. Uh, and then once you start the engagement, uh, the best place to start from is from your Facebook friends. You know, invite them to come over and like your page. Uh, and there's a place let me just show you how to do that if we just go back into how to invite your friends so just to remember uh, as a as a memory aid here um when you are going to invite your friends you need to be signed in with yourself so if i went down here i've got all these pages if i click on one of these i am now then signed in at that page if i sign in my page i can't invite my friends uh so i'm hoping that makes sense so you come in here you can see 49 is for, let's go to this, I love Doberman Pinchers. So that's that's one of my pages. I'm now signed in as myself, and you know you know who you're signed in as because it says it here. So I'm signing as Hakeem. I would then come here and I'd put in I love Doberman Pinchers. For some reason it doesn't seem to be recognising it, but let's have a look. As I said, my Facebook can sometimes be very ropey. I don't know why. Let me try again. So let me refresh that browser. There we go. That's working now. I love. There we go. I love Doberman Pinchers. Okay. So now that I'm I'm in there, then you can drop down and it says invite friends, and that's how you invite a friend. And that's as simple as it is. So if you come down here, I'll just show you. As I said, my Facebook is always very strange. If you come down here, then what you'll see is there's the merchandise that they're selling. Yeah, so I very rarely, yeah, well, not very rarely. I put it, I put those posts in there. But as you can see, if you go down here, then the majority of it's pictures, comments, and different things. So we're not focusing on actually just trying to sell the merchandise, although that is the whole aim of the page. Okay, so let's move back to the slides. So yeah, invite people to like your business page that I showed you there, friends and family. Customers, if you've got them, that you can obviously you can also import email lists, etc. If you want, uh, and then as others see your popularity increasing, they will then start uh, to to 
actually stop lagging your page and engaging your page etc and the key thing is make sure that you actually post quality content and engage your followers and you'll see uh, as time goes on that the, that, that the better you get at understanding what your customers want the more engagement you'll get the more likes you'll get etc etc okay so SEO and Facebook um, you know there's a process uh, and I'm gonna go very very briefly because we've been talking about this for quite a long period of time one thing you need to know is the business pages are, are public and they're gonna get indexed as well and a lot of times I might you know ask my neighbor I need to go to a dentist who do you recommend and they'll say oh Charlie Smith uh, is really good in this town uh, you should check him out so I'll come over to my browser and I'll look for Charlie Smith uh, it, you know and a lot of the time what happens they go that they, they have a Facebook page and it'll actually pull the Facebook page up and then they'll people will gravitate towards that so you want to make sure that you're, you're helping yourself get social proof and you're focusing on that so uh, a couple of things you can do as I said don't choose an obscure URL make sure you get a decent URL that's going to be uh, linked um, sorry going to be indexed by the site and then link uh, you know your Facebook page or link to your Facebook page directly from your website okay so key thing here getting more likes number of likes provide social proof or uh, an expertise when people see that you've got a lot of likes they they're more likely to like the page and they feel that actually this is a page that actually is an expert in this particular area because lots of people are there so what we want to do is offer a promotion or a special offer you know publish interesting and valuable content we talked about that purchasing ads that reach beyond your current network uh, and try and get visitors to your location to like the page when when they when they arrive so you can use apps to do that so um you know there's lots of different things that you can do learn as it says about what type of content your readers want to want to do provide a tip post tips you know choose different themes or topics invite readers to, to join the conversation so all the stuff we, stuff we talked about in terms of um getting engagement you know that's what you need to do and the call to action in terms of click like you know and, and ask people ask loyal fans you know get your friends and families to like the page you know i i often put marks out of 10 for uh you know this page if you if it, if, if it's any more than an eight get your friends and family to like the page so there's loads of different things that you can do another thing which we do very very regularly is contests and sweepstakes you know the difference between the two is that contests involve voting on a winner based on certain guidelines so for example you would say um you know put up a picture that a fan has sent in uh, or put up three or four pictures that fans have sent in and said like look we want to vote uh, you know vote on which picture you like one two or three and you normally get loads of interaction on that um, sweepstakes are, are great because they, they you don't have to do anything you can basically just you know say well actually if you click if they click like they can enter or what I tend to do is you know click here to enter and they put their email in there so um, just a little word of warning here before you do any competition look at the terms and conditions uh, because if you go into Facebook on on the uh, help section it'll give you terms and conditions for competitions etc so make sure you don't breach those because uh, you can't I think you, you shouldn't be, be sort of like trading likes for entry I think there's, there's times when they allow you to do it and there's times when you're not allowed to do it I tend to not, not do that I tend to focus on uh, capturing people's emails to be honest because that's really useful so again you need to understand what is it your objective is it to increase likes uh, then if it is then maybe hold a sweepstake uh, if it's to increase engagement ask readers to vote on best uh, entry photo and the reason why the um, likes increase it because what what you do is you you set up a competition which is then viral so I click a, I, I get them to click to a link they go to that link it basically says you know three steps to enter this competition number one um, basically share sorry like the page and share on Facebook number two uh, share on Twitter number three enter uh, the competition and th and then you set it up so that they obviously then capture their email but then also they're sharing that competition uh, on Facebook and on Twitter so it starts to increase engagement and it starts to improve what uh, your, 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 your reach so that's contests and sweepstakes I've, I've mentioned that sweepstakes generally have a larger number of entries than contests because it's very easy uh, to do it um, and always as I said follow 
the Facebook term and conditions re re regarding those to make sure you don't fall foul of them. Otherwise, you know, um, I think they give you a warning, but then they can they can close you down. So you want to make sure that that doesn't happen. More on likes. The thing you can do, like making charitable contributions, when you hit a certain number of likes. So I've done that in the past, where you basically on your your timeline banner, you oh, it's not your timeline banner, either in your timeline or you can actually post it on your your cover photo that you put in there. You know that once we hit five thousand likes, that we're going to give a donation to X charity. So for example, on the Doberman page, you know if I put on there and I've done it, that you know when we hit. 5,000 likes we're going to give a donation to the American Kennel Club or you know the Doberman Club of wh wherever it may be people are very likely to like it and then they're even more likely to actually get other people to like it so that's a really way uh, a good way of doing it and then you know paying it forward just giving people something something for liking the page so if I'm a restaurant getting them to like the page and saying that yeah for everyone who comments or likes the page they will get a free um, you know, appetizer. I'm going to move very quickly because I know I'm running. Out, I've already run out of time. Uh, add to email signatures, business cards, brochures, etc. So there's lots of lots of different ways uh, to get more likes shared across uh, different media. Standard programs you've got built in there. You've got loads of different apps um, in there. Fo the, the photograph uh, is an app. The video button is an app. Events and notes, etc. And there's loads and loads of apps available. And apps are a, a real seamless way to connect with your business fan page. And I'm just going to show you this here because I think that's important just because some people won't know what an app is. So if I go to, and apps only happen on your business page. So if I go to, I'm just trying to think where I've got, this is my, this is uh, like a personal business page. It's a business page for Facebook. So this is like personal branding page. Then this is a an app. So if you click on there, and this is what I talk about in terms of trying to capture people's emails. This integrates into Facebook. This is avoiding the top 10 internet marketing mistakes. They register there, they put their email there, and then, then they submit, and I get their email uh, and address, which then allows me to then uh, contact them at a later date off of Facebook. And I would always suggest that whatever business you have, if you can get their email address in an ethical manner because you've given them something and they're happy and they've opted into it then I would say that's probably one of the best things to do because then they are part of your database moving forward okay so lots of different things you can do um, but the key thing is plan it strategically but make sure it's authentic use the calendar or the schedule as I said to plan the topic of the conversation provide high value products services and information regularly uh, and then you know there's loads of different things you can do photographs I'm gonna click through those you can share on on your timeline on different people's timelines in groups on different pages this is just an example of sharing on another person's timeline uh, or sh sharing something yeah on another person's page so you just go onto their onto their page uh, and then you just click that share a photo so it's very very easy videos really popular we have talked about YouTube being massive before Four billion hits a day. Sixty-one percent of businesses um, are using YouTube to deliver content, and over a million actions. So, upload videos, get it from YouTube, get your link, stick it in there. Just loads of different things. You know, you, if you can use, if you can competitors are using a lot of video, then maybe you want to be doing that. If your competitors aren't, I would suggest still do it because then you're getting a, a leap on your comp on your competitors. Uh, and it's Facebook, Facebook, as it says there, uh, is one of the biggest referral sources. So. Again, make sure it's useful content. Types of videos, I'm not going to go through that because we're going to have a a, a, a course, uh, one of the webinars is going to be on uh, types of videos and, 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 and video creation and different types of videos. Make sure you've got lots of photos on there. And then in terms of selling, you know, just a few key checkpoints. Do you have an app to capture emails like I've just showed you? Do you have something that integrates your sales page with your business? You know, mix up the content with relative, relevant posts and sales promotions, as I said we say a, a, a three to one ratio is possibly the best way to do it. I, if you're going to do a lot of promotional posts, always make sure you have three content posts, which aren't about sales, to every one sales post you put on there. Make sure you respond to every question. Uh, if I go on a, on a page and I see there's loads of unanswered questions, I don't really, um, it doesn't motivate me. Or if I see that you know the last post was you know last year or six months ago, you think, mm, I'm not really sure. That's a great page. So promote your page and start with your friends. These are just a, cop, a, a couple of top tips. 
post three to five size at day at minimum, put photographs, put a mix uh, 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 of things, links, videos, links to articles, photographs go really, really well in Facebook. Always put a call to action. Uh, that does very well and it actually encourages people to engage. So ask a question, click like if, click share if, what do you think of, um, and list build, try and capture people's emails. Okay, key thing, and I do apologize for being five minutes over, but I just want to get through these because they're really important. Are you reaching your goals, you know, analytics? Is each strategy paying off? Go on to Facebook Insights. I have to show you this because if you miss out on this, you're missing out on a big part of Facebook. Let me get back to the page. If you go in here, see Insights. I'm not going to go through it. If you just go on there, so you click on there, see Insights. And what you find here is you've got loads and loads of data. You'll have an overview. You'll have information about likes. You'll have information about reach, visits, posts, people. People tells you how you know what's the best time uh, to post to people. It talks to you about engagement. These are the ones which have the best engagement, etc. So really, really important to look at your analytics. You know, as it says there, it give you all of that information. And the key thing is any campaigns you're doing, record your baseline numbers. Uh, before you start any campaign and then check that actually the objective of that campaign is reached so if your contest was to try and triple you know to increase the number of, of women on your page did it do it you know and what what can you learn from it how can you capitalize on this how can you increase use that to uh, increase your sales and that then leads to your return on investment are you actually delivering a return on investment you know how much traffic has been generated to that sales page you know it Again, this is taking you back to what were the objectives? Are you achieving those objectives? And more, more importantly than anything else, how many sales on that page can be linked directly to the fact that you, uh, or should I say, how many sales in your business can be linked directly to that sales page? And the analytics and the ads that you run can really help you that help you there. And what you're trying to do, uh, in essence, is to increase your influence you know what how much influence did you gain you know what 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 benefit did you get from that and effectively what I'm trying to say is you need to track your results make sure that Facebook isn't just a place for you to go uh, and enjoy yourself and it's a great medium and you get loads of interaction but keep in mind what your objective is now I know that was a real whirlwind and I've just scratched the surface there just to give you some real intro in introductions to it um, just the beginning and I hope you can take one idea you know from what I've gone over today and just run with it if even if that's just creating an app um, or you know and you don't have an app, and, and if you don't have an idea how to create an app as I said just go into the help section or go onto YouTube and put creating an app in YouTube and it and there's loads of them and it'll be like two or three minutes long so it's really easy to do it uh, and then the other thing is the or, or the key thing for me is whenever you're doing anything have an objective test it if it works rinse and repeat if it doesn't work tweak it if it still doesn't work bin it you know don't get wedded to ideas if it works great if it doesn't get rid of it and then try something else so you know that's that's what you really want to do so just a quick um conclusion any business doesn't matter what that business is can be used on on you know can be used to market on facebook solicitors uh, always say to me no it's not my sort of business i don't need it you do uh, and we have clients who are solicitors and they increase their customers through that so it's really important uh, you know it's free to get started marketing so it, it's really low well it's free so it's low cost and the return on investment compared to other methodologies is significantly better people want to get engaged so make sure you have conversations and you know ask for opinions of people because people like to give their opinions and people like to hear from other people most importantly have authentic and real conversations so thanks for that apologies for the <laughs> whistle stop nature of that um questions i'm only going to answer one or two questions because I, i'm a few, quite a few minutes over uh, so what I'll say is again email me there and we'll I'll either answer it directly or I'll get one of the team to answer it um, just a couple of questions here I think I covered some of these but I'll just go over them uh, how many times can you like a page you can only like it once you can unlike it and then like it again but I, I don't see any any benefit so you can like it and then it's liked and then people will know that you've liked it 
Uh, not sure why that's being asked, but you can do it. How do you invite friends? Uh, I've shown you that already, and I haven't got time to go back it in, but effectively what you do is make sure that you are on as your own personal profile. Type into that search bar the page that you that you want to invite people to. Then when you go to that page, then go into the build an audience, and then it'll, and it'll be a drop down, and it'll say invite, um, invite your friends. So that is all I've got time for. There's a couple of others um, about viewing the analytics page, but if that, that's a real serious uh, issue or any questions that you have that you're not clear about, hit me up on that uh, email address or you've got my number as well, I think, on the website. Just give me a call and I can talk you through anything with regards to that. So thank you very, very much for listening um, you know the, the homework for today because someone's have to see him someone's having the homework for this week is really just to create a schedule for yourself and pick one thing that you're going to focus on and just and just really focus on getting that done um, and see how that works and, and what kind of response you get next week we're going to be talking about LinkedIn another one of my favorite uh, social networks so we're going to continue that social media program uh, and again if you have any questions between now and then just hit me up on there so thank you again thanks for the questions and i will speak to you all uh, next week thanks very much <laughs>